you've ever encountered a club where there was some kind of personality problem between some of the officers or something going on like that? Okay. Or is, is somebody was sitting in the other room? Uh, thank you. There are people in this club that don't like the speech topics of this person. Because they're religious or something. I want you to think about how the money flows. When you submit $45 to each for each member of your club to Toastmasters International, a quarter of that comes back to the district. All district funding comes through TI. If you have a problem in a club, whether you're area division, if you're the district director, that can't be resolved by talking to the people and maybe even having them talk to each other, you are not to address it. Pass it up to the food chain and we will pass it on to Toastmasters International because they have lawyers. The district is an arm of Toastmasters International. The clubs have their own checking accounts and stuff. They're, they're sort of separate, but we are officers of Toastmasters International. All the way from the president and CEO, all the way down to area directors. So if there's a problem you can't resolve by gentle talking, pass it up the food chain and we will pass it on to, because we're going to want to know. All right. The next section is how to have a distinguished area or division. Pull out your 222 book. That's the district leadership handbook. If you want to know what item number it is, if you want to order this or whatever, it's on the uh, cover page here, 222 down here. You can download PDF. Is, this, is, is there a download for this? Oh, yes. Yeah, I recommend downloading it because it's searchable. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. I want you to turn to the page right after the table of contents. No, that's not it. Where is it? There we go. Really? Oh, it's actually in front of the table of contents. I'm thinking it's right in the front. Where is it? I want you to look at this page here. How many of you didn't know what an area was so you were asked to be an area director? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. This is how Toastmasters is organized. And oh, by the way, look who's at the top. Members. Oh, it's before the table of contents. Before the table of contents, right there. And don't you love the rainbow colors of the brand, right? Of the brand colors. And it says members belong to clubs, and clubs have an executive committee. See the lines? I don't know if you, if you don't have really good prescription, you might not see the lines. Clubs belong to areas, and areas have area councils. Areas belong to division, and divisions have dis division councils. Districts, well, sorry, divisions belong to districts, and districts have two councils. The district council and the district executive committee. Which one are area director and division directors part of? The district executive committee, or DEC. Who are the constituents of the council, district council, or sometimes known as the general council? Oh, me. I'm club president. Club presidents and DPEs. Each of those units have different responsibilities within the district, which we won't talk about right now, but I want you to see that. Districts belong to regions. Regions belong, uh, there are 14 regions in the world, and each one of those elects a member to the board of directors. And we are in Region 1. I actually thought Region 1 would be like in New York or something. I was surprised. I thought it would be in Southern California. See that, yeah. <laughs> District 1's in Southern California. Because that's yeah, where, that's how big it what's his name? Smedley started it. Yeah. Well, no, that's, it's actually they renamed it. It's 100 now, or um, it's also called F District. Founders District, yeah. yeah. But it's actually 100. Yeah. Can you meet? It's called the F. How many of you just learned something you didn't know by looking at the page? It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. 
Uh, for those of you that are around too long, what we call now directors used to be called governors, and it gives you both sets of titles here. So if you hear somebody say governor, it's one of those old timers who forgot what day it is, okay? Yeah. So that's the district structure. Now let's talk about the district recognition program in your 1490 book. That's the other milk chocolate brown bandit on the bottom. The district recognition program. Mission values, I gotta remember the pages I wanna use here. Hold on. Got missions, envision future, la 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 la. I wanna go to the here, page eight. Notice that distinguished clubs are both, are part of all three of these, a distinguished area, a distinguished division, and a distinguished district. But they're part in different ways at each level. In other words, a distinguished district is not determined by how many distinguished divisions it has. A distinguished division is not determined by how many distinguished areas it has. All three of those are determined by how many distinguished clubs it has. So it's possible for a division to be distinguished even though not all of its areas are. Ooh. Now, the program foundation on page 11. The distinguished club program. How many of you can spell DCG? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I like to have fun sometimes. Give me the first two letters, Mike. <laughs> As I said to the division directors a few minutes ago, some people think that the Distinguished Club program is a club with which you hit the officers of a club over the head. Because that's how it's presented to them. We need you to be distinguished. We need you to be distinguished. We need you. Who's going to be your second CC? That's not what it's there for. What does the Distinguished Club program Measure. Member success. Member success. You're, that's most of it, yeah. Club health. Club health. Club health. This is an indicator, not a battery ram. Please. On the top of page 12 is information many of you already know. To be a distinguished club, the club must successfully complete five goals in the out of, of five goals out of ten of the distinguished club program. Does it matter which five? No, no. not even. I thought you have membership. Yeah, that's not one of the ten goals. It's not one of the ten goals. No, 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 no. no. It's a threshold. Okay, all right. There's two things going on here. There's a membership qualification to be considered for the DCP program. So having five goals means your club's eligible to be distinguished if you've met your eligibility requirement, your membership requirement. Oh, but that's not one of the five goals. It's not one of the five goals. It's a different thing. It's all Somebody asked me earlier, look at all those clubs with eight and seven goals. How come they don't have the little distinguished placard? Because they don't have enough members. They don't have the right number of members. Page 11, qualifying requirements. Is that what it is? Yeah. Page 11, back up one page. Back up one Second five. paragraph, qualifying requirements. Qualifying requirements. In other words, you can complete as many goals as you want, but if you don't have the charter strength membership of 20, or you have increased since from your base by a net of five, you're not eligible to be distinguished. You're not qualified to be distinguished. Yes, sir? You know what would be really helpful because this is really confusing. I think the, the net base and how many you have to grow, how many joint members you can have, how many honorary members you can have, to be a distinguished club, it would be nice if there was something succinct that explained that. That's well, right there on the page. Oh, yeah, it is. It's yeah. 20, period. 20 or 20. 20. 20 uh, when I say the page, I mean online. Yeah. They give you the base and they tell you how many active members. It's You see, it's not about new members to be qualified. It's about active members. And to be active, what must you do? Pay your dues. Pay your dues, Pay your dues through TI. Yeah. Or through the club TTA. Through to the end of the current membership oh. period. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. Of course. In the current period, yes. 
So when you pay dues that are due April 1st, you must pay all the way through September 30th, then you're active. And this is something we mentioned earlier that we didn't want to get into. When a new club charters, if it happens to charter in March, and they pay six months dues, they're only paid through the end of August. None of those <coughs> members are active. What the? I, I have to agree with Ken. I think that the, the information is present in numerous locations. It's not clear. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and TI could go a long way to clarify this for individual members all the way through club and, and district and division and so on, leadership. One succinct chart that indicates. Um, it's not actually, uh, I have to recall the verbiage on the DCP worksheet, um, but there, it, it just, it really isn't clear, it's a, it's and I pay attention. Or, yeah, I pay attention to this, and it wasn't until we had made everything else, but didn't have our net five or, there, or, yeah. or core strength to qualify, yep. and missed a year of distinguished club, that it was clear to me. So. And you're not alone, is she? No. Yeah, no. that's what I was ah, Thank you. <laughs> no, everybody in this room has stumbled over right. this, including me, in the past year. And the more the more you work with this, trust me, it will be clear. Finally, it's going to click, and you're going to say, "Oh, okay, there it is." I got no, it. It, it's. Let me just say, it's clear to me now. It's been clear to me for the last couple of years. Yes. But consistently, there is lack of clarity by people who are engaged with this stuff. Mm -hmm. So. It, there is a there's a gap in communication or a, a lack of clarity about this point in the material that needs to be conveyed to everybody. Including the clubs, yes. So. It's marketing. They're not going to the people that are supposed to be using this information like we're supposed to do. I was told that I don't have the language of an account. And I thought, well, okay, so talk to me in my language then. <laughs> this is bean counter stuff. I promise you, Phil. I'm a bean it's, uh, uh, I have a point on the membership that will that I just learned a little bit today uh, this month. Transfer members uh, don't count as a new member, uh -huh. so that just I just learned that. Um, yeah. So you, looking at the your membership dues is the key on knowing if you got another new member. But also as an area director, I found. What you just described as the need to communicate that, that's really important for area directors to communicate to club presidents especially what how the distinguished club program works because it is a little bit confusing at first, but if you explain it, look at you have to be distinguished to open the gate, you need twenty members. Or if you have way less than twenty, you get the net five. But that, that I've explained it as opening the gate into the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's a threshold that everybody has to pass over, yeah. and there is math yes. involved. It, but, the, yeah. you, but there is a word picture somewhere yes. that will yeah. explain yes, this. Exactly. And then you have to define what a new member is. Mm -hmm. oh, well, no, new members don't. Or what, what, what membership five is additional is. Members. No, yeah. five additional is net five. There's a Venn right. diagram. There's something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For example, jelly beans. Yeah. Notice that Thursday Night Live is is now select distinguished. That's what the S means. But they only have 19 members. They have eight goals, but only 19 members. How can they be distinguished? Net five. 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 They started at 14. If you start at 15 or above, you've got to get to 20. But if you start below that, it's a net growth of five. Net growth. So if you lose three, you've got to get eight. As you look and you'll see that some clubs have two check marks for members. They added four more members and then they added four more, and yet they're not distinguished because they lost more than yeah. Oh, okay. And it can't be a transfer member, but it can be an honorary member. What's an honorary member? Honorary member. Honorary member. Honorary. There you go. Well, reins there's you reinstatements. There's the issue with reinstatements. Reinstatements. No, you can no, pay not for, for somebody. The mayor. If you don't understand why a club is distinguished or not distinguished, yeah. Yeah. who should well, you ask? Fair. This was, this 
just you can have two of those, I believe. So I can just pay for do. Why does right. it require you to do math instead of no it's a table? It just tells you it where you're at. It does tell you. Well, it's it's pretty simple. simple. It's actually, it does tell you. Instead, instead of you having to do your math or looking at stats. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. <laughs> or is it somewhere where we're not seeing? Lisa, go into the club. It's right there. Yeah. When you look at each individual club, it will show the base, what they currently are, and what they're required to get to <laughs> this year by the end of June. Down here, it gives you the little parenthetically, that's 20 members or a net growth of five new members. The, the, I think the, the complications come when you do have members of different classes yeah. and whether or not they count towards that exactly. goal. When, when, when it really came, got hit, brought home for me, was when we had um, a member, and I can't remember what their status was, if it was a transfer or whatever, that we thought was counting towards our member, our net five, that didn't. And so we didn't work to get that one extra member no, that we needed to get account. distinguished. Now, is this number we're looking at, does it take that to, into account that you had a transfer? Or you if had you look a, at the club, I believe it will. It, but did not it? here. Did it? It no, didn't? No, right. that it required, going and ferreting out the answer. By the way, look when this club was charged, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's almost as old as I am. So that doesn't tell you the truth? I'm, no, I'm no, what it, no, what it does it, tell you the truth. It, it does tells tell you, you what Toastmasters International thinks the truth is, yes. Yeah. It tells and you the if, truth. And if you have a question, you check with your trio, and if there's still a question, we will contact TI for you. You can call them if you want to, but we're gonna want to know the answer too. Seriously, am I right, Kyle? Yes. Mm -hmm. You see your trio. <coughs> and I do encourage you to call TI. They're very friendly and very helpful. I've well, never once very friendly and, and very helpful when they can be. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm messing up my cameraman here. Now, the DCP is the foundation of everything else distinguished. So yes, there are some issues with the understanding of everybody in the room from time to time. But once we say it, once we understand we agree that, yes, distinguished clubs, we, we can usually figure out what those are. Now we can say, well, what does it take for an area to be distinguished? Page 13. The easiest way is to go to the summary in the middle of the page in the gray boxes. <coughs> distinguished clubs equal to at least 50% of the area's club base makes you distinguished. Well, club base? What the heck is that? Well, notice there's, there's four tabs here now, but once you click into one club, you get this fourth tab. And normally when you come in here, there's only three. This is the club performance summary. Here's the division and area performance summary. I'm gonna go there next. So I think that's where the air, uh, club base is shown. Uh, yeah, see the base of four here? Now, if we scroll down to a club, to an area that's added a club, which would be, I think, first Division one, D. Area 12. Division D. Area 12. Area 12. Area 12. Ah. Area 43. Now, how many clubs are listed here? I can't see. Oh, I'm sorry. I make a, six better, of them. I make a better wall than a window. Yeah. There's six clubs there. This one says it chartered on March 24th. What is the club base for Area 12? Five. How many of those have to be distinguished for the area to be distinguished? Three. At least 50%. Three. So three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds simple, right? Just remember, if it doesn't work out exactly, let's say there were seven clubs in an area and then the math becomes much harder, right? The base is seven. How many of those would have to be? Four. four. It has to be at least 50%, at least half. If you get two out of four, that's at least half. So it's greater than or equal 50%. Okay. And this will change as of July 1 because most of the areas are below 5. So let's say you had a club uh, area that was 7 this year. We realign, they have 4. Yeah. So what next the base year, is now 4. Now next year the base is 4, yeah. Just the base is, and somebody said it over here, what was the alignment, how many clubs were in your area on July 1st? Okay. Now, 
there are cases of clubs transferring. We lost one that way when Warehouser, um, uh, not Timber Talker, the Timber Talkers yeah. moved from Federal Way to Seattle. They're now in District 2. That happens, in fact, that hasn't happened yet. Technically, it starts July 1st. They're still in our district this year, even though they've been meeting in Seattle for months. But I don't want to get into that, it's over an application. So, if I wanted to be president, uh, sorry, select distinguished, I would have to have <coughs> distinguished clubs equal to at least 50% of the area's club base, plus one more distinguished club. 50% plus one. Now hold on. Our base is five. <coughs> we all agree 50% or more is three. <coughs> How much is 50% plus one? Four. Four, which would be 80%. That's why they don't say 75%, they say plus one. And to be president's distinguished, you have to do all of that and have a net growth of one club. So it might go down then to area 43, please. 43. First of all, let me, let me say this area has a new club. If they could get four, of their original five, four clubs to be distinguished, and that means five goals or more. It doesn't mean presidents distinguished or any of that. If five more, and have a new club, this area could be presidents distinguished. Now let's scroll down to 43, Christine's area this year. Okay, and so Puyallup Zone Voices is a president distinguished club, and the others are not distinguished. <coughs> However, so we have four, right? So we would need two clubs to be distinguished, but some are lifelong learners, just chartered, and is also distinguished. So we have our 50% of our base then, because now lifelong learners is distinguished, and throughout the voices is distinguished, but lifelong is the new club that just chartered, not part of the base, but it does still I don't see that, that's my question. I didn't see it in the language, and I'm asking if I understand this correctly. Well, it doesn't matter, because, because uh, oh no, I'm sorry, in the wrong area. Now we have all four clubs stayed, two are different. distinguished, yeah. and one has been added. So does that mean Area 43 makes presidents distinguished this year? 50% plus one? No, you've got five. No, 50% plus one, plus a new club. 50% of base, 50% of base, we have four plus clubs, one. plus one club. Which would be three, plus one distinguished. distinguished. They get to select, and then having a new club. You should be distinguished, but not president's distinguished. Unless one of unless one of these other three clubs gets to got, gets to distinguished. I believe that's correct. Okay. Right? Wait, we, this is the language. Distinguished club equals at least fifty percent of the club base. The club yep. base was four. Fifty percent is two distinguished clubs in the area. Right. Plus. But one, then we have we also we also added a new club which is some of the lifelong learner in yep. this year yep. and that club is already distinguished. So now yep. I have two distinguished clubs in my area. Plus a net gain of one. But it doesn't say that the gain of one doesn't include this isn't the base. The gain of one right. is not part of the base. But remember to be no, but to, to, to be to president you gotta be select. And if you read closely it says uh, at least fifty percent of the area's club base plus one more distinguished club so and a net growth of one. So you need one more club to be so distinguished? You need three it. to be distinguished. Okay. Be president. Be president. Be president. Be president. Oh, see, I knew it was language. I knew I wasn't getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to find that. Thank you. Tiny. Okay, there is another place, uh -huh. which is in the daily reports, yeah. and it's area to-dos. Yes. Area to-dos tell you exactly <laughs> what you need. Right. It tells you area 43 to be select distinguished. The area needs two more distinguished clubs. So click here on daily reports. See where see the most is? Um, additional reports. Additional reports. Thank you. And then you have to wait for, wait, wait for the uh, network. Yeah. Down to 32. District 32. Area 32. Oh, here I am pointing at my screen that you can't see what yeah, I'm pointing. And let's go down and click on uh, 43. 43. Are you in area to do? Yeah. Yes. Area yeah. 43. Okay. Yeah. To be distinguished, they need one more club to be distinguished. To be select distinguished, they need two more clubs to be distinguished. Thank you. Yeah, that's very helpful. To be president, they need two more clubs to be distinguished and one more club. 
I like this to also tell you is. where you can help your clubs. Yeah. And Love it. get down here. Yeah. Northwest Comedy Club has 60 CQ goals, but still yeah. needs six more people. Needs four goals, needs this, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I like that. So if you, how many of you just learned something you didn't know? Yeah. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, do you do something else? I, know. <laughs> I don't know. That was pretty dang useful. You, oh, oh, time out. <laughs> I forgot this? something. How about this one? Almost distinguished clubs. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's pretty good. Yeah. Tells you how many goals they have, how many paid members they have, how many members they need. Oh, uh, so that's area. assuming they've already met their goals. They just need more members of yeah. the well, no, no, but see, no. yeah, this is just their goals. goals. They're telling you, anyway, I've got another report in Google about this. I'll show you later. Oh, okay. Now, go to the bottom of page 13. In order to foster quality, area directors visit the clubs in their areas at least twice a year, la, 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 file a report. I once had an area director ask me, I got two clubs distinguished. Four club area. Everything's hunky dory, I don't, I don't get it. How come I'm not distinguished? Oh, no. You didn't turn in the reports. Where do you see that? Oh. Now that Kyle has navigated away from the screen. You should have told me to go back. What I always do is, yeah, never mind. The back button will work here for a while, I think. Yeah. You need to click on the area to do now. No, here we go. District area performance, okay? Over here. <clears throat> area 21 doesn't matter. Oh, have they done their renewals? How many of these, how many membership payments have to be done on time for the area renewals? Eight. 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 For the club renewals, eight. correct. Minimum was eight. Club visits. Two. You have to do at least Three. Well, if you've got four clubs, you need three. Okay. I can't remember. Is it 75 percent? I think it's 75. Um, now, here's the amazing part. In October, every club, every area director this past October, or uh, November, excuse me, turned in their club visit reports. Every. I've never seen that before. That's because that. Judy writes to us so much. How many reports? Mine are good. Yeah. <laughs> now, since we're not to May 31st yet, I don't know about. We're the, not to May 31st. Yeah, we're beyond. Yeah, you can see. We are to May 31st. Oh, well, that's right. This is June, isn't it? Yeah. So, yes. Oh. However, the reports are not finalized for May yet. Yeah, there may be some reports that haven't been actually registered, but yeah. So. Are these club reports important? See, I think they are, because you're not distinguished unless you do them. Kyle thinks they are. He answers you in an hour. That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, Kyle is self-employed. He has much more time than that. <laughs> <laughs> On the area to-do list that we saw, where we saw the paint club, yeah. throughout the year, it'll tell whether or not the August through November club visit report has been submitted. It will say if it's been submitted or not, or if that minimum has been met. It will also have a sec second line for February through May reports if they have been met, and that's all on the area to do list. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, uh, question. Go. I need to ask a question on Division C on Area 34. Uh, the paid clubs. Do you know why ours says five paid clubs and not six? Even though we had a club charter and ah, so so we we was, it was the same time as the other one. one. Division C, Division C, area C, area thirty-four. By the way, notice the next thing in your book is the club visit report for your area directors, and then there's something called the area success plan. Whoa. No, they're not glued to that now. They listen oh, to me after that. We just went to that. Oh, you showed them that? Thank you. Did they not get their Well, not, not where it is. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it. So let me answer this question. Let me answer the, his question is, these guys are not showing up as paid members, Star Talkers. Star Talkers chartered in March. Right. They paid six months dues oh, from March 1st to the end of August. Okay. However, TI will not list them as active members until they pay to the end of September. 
because they need to pay dues to the end of that period. Now, this is one of those dues things I didn't want. I don't want. I don't want you to think about. Don't dwell on it. We'll deal with it if and when you are chartering your club. But for for you, I I, I sent an email to Amanda. Uh, uh, Friday, yesterday, reminding her, hey, you guys said you were going to pay your September dues in June. So they're going to pay their September dues and boop, they'll pop up as a oh. brand new club, fully paid, all active. Their members will be listed as, you know, now they're members of, of our district and our, cl and our club number. Them, yeah. yeah, and our club member, and our club number will jump from 99 to 100. Yep. Until, until they pay those September dues, they, you know, uh, TI looks at them as a, as a club in name only. Once they pay the September dues, will they, they count open. as a as a paid club as soon as they pay as September soon as they pay dues. September dues? Okay. I did not know this going into this process, and at no point in the club growth director training did they teach us this. Right. <laughs> I learned it the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why, when you're chartering, you do that one month off like that, and if you end in August, why don't you just select for seven? Um, well, and if I'd known, if I'd known enough to tell people to do that, I would have told them to do that. <laughs> but at no point did anybody tell me. By the way, district metrics don't measure you unless you're paying up through September. That was a that was a real learning experience. And then having to explain it to the three clubs that charted in March. Yeah. <laughs> One of them has paid already. Thank yeah. you, Tom. Yeah. Let's look at the division uh, success plan or distinguished division program on page 29. Again, the three gray boxes. Distinguished select president. Distinguished clubs in a division equal to at least 40% of the of the club base for that division. 40%? Two out of five. Oh, not 50? You mean the area and the division criteria are different? Well, it makes sense if the area has become 75%. But notice it doesn't say anything about how many of your areas are distinguished. It does, it's about clubs. Yep. And to be select distinguished, you've got to get to 45%. And to be president distinguished, you've got to get to 50% and have at least one a net growth of one club. So could you see how a division could be distinguished even though not all are maybe even none of their areas are, depending on how the clubs are distributed and how the distinguished clubs are distributed. And then there's a division success plan. These success plans are, are about you thinking about how you want to do business. One of the things we have to do today, and I was gonna ask somebody to do it, I forgot, on page 43 is we have to record everybody who's here today. Add, uh, you, you wanna, well, yeah, you don't know as so many people. Anyway, <clears throat> we'll, we'll do this during the break. Make sure that she's got your area and or division identified here on page 43. She who? Uh, Jenny, I'm sorry, thank you. Can I ask one question? Yep. I haven't seen the paper that was supposed to sign up for badges. For the badges, who's got the badges paper? It's right here. It's right behind you, that's it. Now, I want to allow Kyle a couple of minutes to, as to how you should talk to clubs about them being, I, I see that, I see that, but this is not important. Thank you. Give him two minutes, would you? Like a table topic. Have as many times he wants. <laughs> okay, how many of you, when you were in your club and an area director, not you, came to visit the club, <laughs> how many of you have sat there in horror as the area director tells the club, you guys need to get more educational goals in, you guys need to get more members so our area can be distinguished, or our district can be distinguished. Has anybody seen that? No. 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 Okay, she's got her hand in. I have seen that. I have seen area directors do that. It horrifies me when I see that. Let me ask you this. If somebody came in and started talking to you about what your club needed to do so that that area could be distinguished, would you care? No, I don't even know what the area is. Right. Do, so even less would you care if somebody talked to you about what the, what you needed to do so the district could be distinguished, right? They don't think about you. Because you don't care. No. They don't care. No. So what do club members care about? They're on themselves. themselves. They're all. Them, they're themselves. Well, I, I, I've thought about the language that I like to use when I talk to clubs about being distinguished. And I think that clubs like want to be, club members want their club to be healthy, happy and vibrant. Healthy, happy, and vibrant. Healthy means 
They're growing. Happy means there's camaraderie. Vibrant, in my mean, means club members are achieving educational goals. Club members are growing in some way. They're challenging themselves and growing. Now, if club members want that, one of the things that, that we've learned in, through organizational uh, science is what you measure gets done. Okay. One of the other things that they, they, they learn through organizational science is any particular, would you like this mic? Any particular uh, task you're going to perform has a, a critical success factors. Those, those few things that have to happen in order for the task to be successfully completed. Well, TI has done the analysis for us. And, I, and uh, how many of you have been in Toastmasters longer than 15 years? Okay. I, 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 I've been in 24 years, and I can tell you, 24 years ago, the DCP program that TI had was insane. It made no sense. <laughs> it rated clubs from one to you know 10,000 or whatever, and you got points for doing things that had nothing to do with the club being really successful or a club being healthy, happy, and vibrant. It was insane. But they, they, TI sat down and looked at what what are the critical success factors for a club to be, to be healthy, happy, and vibrant. Well, members have to be growing. How can we measure that? Well, the only realistic way to measure that is, are they completing educational projects? I mean, can you grow without completing an educational project? Sure you can. But it's one way for TI to measure. Is, is the club healthy? Are they growing? Well, how do you measure that? Well, you measure that whether the membership of the club is increasing. That's an easily measurable item. Now, are there things, so those are critical success factors. Are, are the club officers getting trained? Are the, is the club paying dues on time? You know, are, are they swapping officers every year and things like that? Those are critical success factors for a club to be healthy, happy, and vibrant. And TI measures it for us. So that's convenient. Are there measurements, or, or I should say, are there, are there qualities of a healthy, happy, vibrant club that aren't being measured? Yes, there are. Like what the like the quality of the evaluations. That's one of those things that's really critical to a healthy, happy, vibrant club is the, is the quality of the evaluation. But that's a that's a qualitative thing. How do you measure that? How, how do you assign a number to it? That would be really hard. When TI figures that out, our GCP program will be golden. Right now, it's just silver. <laughs> I, but I love this because what this does is TI provides us, the club member, with a really easy way to measure whether our club is happy, healthy, or vibrant. I see clubs are like, well, I, I know a club member, long time Toastmaster, he's like, I don't care about DCP. Well, of course he doesn't care about the DCP because he was prejudiced against it 15 years ago when the DCP was insane. It made no sense. It had nothing to do with whether your club was healthy, happy, or vibrant. Now it makes sense. <clears throat> is your club growing? Are your members getting some, you know, are your members growing, meaning do, uh, completing some educational projects? Do you pay your dues? Do your officers get trained? Do you swap officers every year? All those things are good for healthy, happy, vibrant clubs. So we need to talk to our clubs in that language. And then, and you know, I, I don't care whether TI thinks my club is distinguished. I don't. I care that my club is a great club, that we have a great experience, and that when a guest comes in, they go, wow, and want to join. So I try to talk to people in that language. And then, if I refer back to the DCP, it's because this is a tool for measuring. And I will tell you, this is a prejudice on my part. You have to have that net growth of five and five educational awards to be distinguished. I think distinguished is misnamed. I think it should be adequate. I think that should be the adequate club, club award. When you hit net growth of five or 20 members and five educational awards in a year, I think that's adequate. But that's my own prejudice. Any club that isn't doing that should be looking at itself going, what the hell are we doing wrong? And we have a lot of clubs in District 32 who are sitting at 10 members, 12 members, who, who I have, have dropped a member in the course over, you know, have a net loss of members over the course of the year. We have a lot of clubs that, that are suffering like that. And we need to, we, the membership team, we need to support them in learning how to market themselves, how to grow themselves, how to make their meetings better, and bring those new members in. Uh, so that was that's my little bit on how to talk to your clubs about the DCP. Watch the language you use so that they know you're talking to them about the things they care about. 
Thanks, sir. When should you talk to the clubs about being distinguished? Right now, all the time. <laughs> I submit to you that the best time to talk to clubs about being distinguished is when you've got their leaders in front of you. When would that typically be? TLI. Executive committee meeting. Um, if you talk to them at TLI, they're learning so much, you're, it's just like, you know, the fire hose is on. This is one of the main reasons I recommend you try to make executive committee meetings of the clubs. You don't have to make every one of them. However, if you call them up and say, hey, do you mind if I come in and, and sit in on your next executive committee meeting and they say, what is that? <laughs> they may know it by another name. Executive committee is what TI calls the seven officers when they're together. They may know it as the leadership meeting, or they may call it, uh, I don't know, anything. Board meeting. The what? Board meeting, yes, I've heard yeah, call, call the board meeting. meeting. When do your officers meet? Oh, yeah, we meet uh, quarterly. Mm -hmm. Quarterly is an absolute bare minimum. They should be meeting monthly. I know at my club would be 10, 10 times a year because, of course, Christmas. <laughs> we don't want to meet in December. <laughs> And there's usually some holiday in somewhere else that gets in the way. But when you're talking to them, you should have looked at their DCP status before you get there. And what should the number one question be when you walk into such a meeting? Hi. What's the? How can I help you? <laughs> I heard it over here. How can I help you? How can I help you reach your, your goals? goals? And if they say we don't have any goals, you're going to have to work with me. How can I help you reach your goals? That's what a leader is. If they need help setting goals, you can help them. If they've got a VPE that doesn't know how to talk to the club members about what their individual goals are, you can help them or we can get them help from the district. And I found as a, I was a VPE two years in a row. I was the VPE for the first six months and could not, did not, had never heard of DCP until I went to the winter DLIs and I went, no, that's actually some useful, <laughs> some useful numbers. So I actually looked at this. This might actually help me manage my club. And then the second year was like, well, and then I asked, here's the big mistake I made at the VPE. Okay, it's all of you that want to establish a goal. Set up a meeting with me. How many people responded? Zero. Zero. How many? Zero. 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 Not 30, zero. So that following July, I went through and I looked where everybody was. Say it again, you went I looked, what? the following July, I went and I said, I look where everybody is on their CCs and CLs, and they were on ACs. And I thought, if I was in that spot, what would be a legitimate goal to be at next June? And on December 31st, as a midpoint checker. If you've got somebody who's in their first one or two speeches, asking them to complete their CC by the end of the year might be a big stretch for them. Now, some people will do it. But there are two midpoint, there's, there's two intermediate points in the CC list where you can make goals that actually help the club. What can you do after three speeches that you shouldn't be doing before that? Evaluation. Evaluation. And what can you do after six goals, six speeches, excuse me, that you can't do before six goals? A judge and speak at international speech contests. So if you can find a way to get them, or if they're at zero, see if you can get them to three by December and six by June or something. If you've got people that are already CCs and CLs, you need to challenge them. Can you finish to get from uh, CC to, to ACB to bronze? You need two five manuals, two five speech manuals. Can you finish one by December and one by? And if you set realistic goals, and say, hey, what do you think about setting this as a goal? And you tell them and. Uh, when I did that, first of all, only 75% of the members would even talk to me. <laughs> but those 75, every one of them said, no, I think I can do that, with one exception. When I asked a guy to complete his CC and his CL, he says, well, let me, let me work on the CC and I'll, I'll look at the CL next year. Are you still waiting for him to finish the CL? <laughs> no, he's finished. Yeah. I had to think, it's like. <laughs> but that's the point here. Leadership means you may have to do some of their work for them in this case. And as a club, as an area director, 
you may have to do a little bit of training with those with those club officers. What should you be thinking about doing? And the best way to instigate that in my mind is to have them do a club success plan. Now, clubs that do club success plans don't always get to where they want to be, but they always get farther than if they never looked at it. And one of the things in the club success plan is that thing about who's going to complete their CCs this year and their CLs and all. And in other words, it's that fourth part of the fourth page of the area visit report, area director visit report. Questions? Thoughts? Carolyn? When you talk about those small goals, I had one club member that was looking at this English club program and trying to figure out, well, what does this really mean? I went through that with her and talked to her about the CL program and the, how that works. Well, I'm mentoring somebody. They just don't want to do their third speech yet. Well, can you ask them if they would do that for you? So you can. So you can. That was their last requirement for their yeah. CL. Can you ask that person if they would do that one speech? That's all they have to do for for this year. That third speech for you. Will help the club. Oh, and then that in turn will help your club. Yeah. And that happened. I I was really surprised when I was an area governor three years ago. I went into my clubs not knowing what to expect. And they started asking me a bunch of questions like I knew stuff. <laughs> it was very scary. It's like, you're the area governor. Uh, no, that's not me. I'm, I'm just here. I'm just here to help. And they started asking me questions. And what amazed me was all the answers were at the DCP program. If you are not comfortable with the DCP, you don't have to have all everything memorized and all that. Uh, but you need to know that the first six goals are about education stuff, CCs, leadership, and advanced communicator. And you have to know seven and eight are about membership, and nine is about getting your officers trained, and 10 is about turning in some payments and your officer list. Could you rattle off what I just did? If you can, you're, you're ready to be an area director. And if you didn't, if, you, if, you, if, you, if it's not all quite there yet, spend a few hours with it, seriously. Talk to your division director if you have any questions. Yeah. I hate the success plan. I'm sorry. I'll the club success plan? Yes. You're not the only one. Okay. Well, it's written weird. And I mean, oh. I'm pretty How many of you have never seen the club success plan document? Oh, good. <laughs> this is awesome. Go home. Go back home. It's document number 1111. That must make it important. It's got four ones in it. Download it. It's a PDF. It can be typed into the whole thing. And it looks, the first part of it looks a lot like Moments of Truth. And the last part of it looks a lot like oh, the DCP. And it's like, oh, wait, these things all dovetail. Yeah, so once you learn one of them, yeah. it'll help you in another one. And if you have a question and you ask your division director and they're not sure, what are they going to do? Ask up the line. Yep. All right, let's take a break until three. When we come back, I'm going to do an answer. And you're, I'm, I'm going to want you to shoot this, okay? Thank you. Somebody asked me, can you find out what the club did last year? That's a freaking ruling. I want to know my club members did. Well, that's fine. Okay. Well, and I'll show you that too. If you want to see what clubs performance here, notice at the top of these pages there's you can switch districts, you can switch years. You can switch months, you can switch yeah. which day you're looking at. And so if you wanted to see where someone some club was at right there. at the end of right last year, you go up to the to this year thing here and hit that. And now it's going to recycle back to here's the list of districts. Well we're in region one, so we're right here. This one here we come back. Slow. There we go. And notice it says May here, but when you pop this up, you can pick June. Because it went back to defaulting. And notice that when I pick June, it says as of 21 July. What does that tell you? They have to get it all in. That's when they closed the books last year, it was 21 July. 
And now you can scroll down to whatever club you want and see where they were on any of these tabs. So you can see where their base was last year, you can see what membership was at the end of the year, and 99% of the time that's going to match what their base was. You can see how many goals they got, which goals they got, the whole nine yards. Now. I have a kind of a ringer question to screw this up. Um, <laughs> where does Alaska, because Alaska was not part of District 32. Last year they were. Right, but if I wanted to go back, like. You'd years. have to go back two years and look at uh, undistricted. Okay. Uh, yeah, which is one of the things, that's still in the list here. It's just that Alaska oh, was in there in District ahead. U. Yeah. Sorry, District U. Mm -hmm. uh, member achievements. What I like to do is when I'm looking at this page is if I click on daily reports, it, it navigates to the daily reports. Then when I do what I, when I pop up one of the, uh, one of the daily reports here, it leaves this page here and then I can go backwards and be on the clubs and district reports at the same time I'm looking at. This is Educational Achievements Archive for District 32. Notice the dates are in 15 and 16 here. So you can see who got what award. You can sort by uh, the member name, last name. There's Lori Zabrowski, must have got a triple count at some point. What their club is, which awards they got, the whole nine yards. And You want this year's, you can change the re daily report you're looking at over here in this pop-up. So that's the archive, this is the current year. This is where I'm, uh, the PQD goes to figure out who's got a triple crown coming and stuff like that. Actually, there's a triple crown page. There is a triple crown page, that's right. So does this stuff become available to us when we officially become our... No, it's a, but these, these daily reports and the district dashboards, they're available to anybody who wants to get there. Anybody now, right. logging in. Yep. Yep. Same thing with the area to do reports. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's not, that's not daily reports. That is um, additional reports here. Here's the additional reports. I'm go backwards. Oh, remember that. You go too fast, Mike. I know. My fingers are burning. all the daily reports. Almost distinguished to do this. Here's the Triple Crown report. Look at the Sherry Kenyon person. How many of you know Sherry? <laughs> well, well, she does have five clubs. That's right. She's a member of five different clubs. You know how she's not a member of five different clubs? She helps sponsor four of them. And she likes the people so much she can't leave. She won't leave. Sponsoring or mentoring or coaching a club may become a lifetime attachment. So be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Question, Tiny? Never mind. Oh, okay. It's totally off. I was going to ask about the triple crown because, yeah. Now, the last break here. Little things make a big difference. One of the things, uh, is Alex in the room? I know. Yes. Did you get the sheet and sign in on for the band? Okay. I did, yes. It's up front now. We're changing the D32 communication paradigm as we speak. And one of the things we're doing is going to share documents on Google. Now we've got it. Oh, let me show you how to get the Google documents first. That could happen. Um, let's start with that. So if I type Google, not Google, dot com, go in here, I can do searches and stuff, but up here, see this little Google Apps, right? One of the Google Apps you can pick is Google Drive. Before you click on that, I just want to point out I'm that, logged in. that he is logged in. So if you do not have a Google account, you'll need one, and you'll log in. And if you have a spouse or a significant other, or you're on a shared computer, someone else might be logged in. So you want to make sure that you are logged in. So you're talking about Individually, we have one, or it's district. Individually, every person. We have the, the trio has a, uh, their own Gmail accounts. So as the years as they go navigating out of here, can I can I can I make a suggestion? For instance, yeah, like for me, I have a Google account with my name Kyle.s.hall01 at gmail.com, but I wanted to have access to a bunch of files, and I was going to pass those files over to the club growth director Jenny. 
Uh, so at the beginning of this year, I created one called D32CGD, Club Growth Director, at gmail.com. And the files are going underneath there, and come, Jul come July 1, I'm going to pass that email address and the password over to Ginny, and it's now hers. Now, if you are our division, let's say, Division A director, you might want to, rather than, if you don't have a Google account and you don't want a Google account, create a Division A, you know, D32 Div A at gmail.com account, and anything you put, you can just use it, not store anything there, not accept emails. Uh, and uh, but if you do store emails there at the end of the year, you can pass it over to the next division A director. Soon, I will have a recommended how do you create a Google uh, account on our website. Okay. So right now, I'm logged in as d 32 pqd I have no way to log. I have, and you can get a Google account without a Gmail account. You can use your regular email. But when you do that. Uh, you're only going to have the privileges in these apps that you have as that person, which means I got nothing shared with me. Did you share all that stuff with me? <laughs> Looks like no, it. wait, there's no change. Hold on. Here we go. There. Now i got to remember my password. <laughs> Uh, Hello, Mike. This is Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. No, only old people get that joke. Dave. Dave. Dave's not home. Yep. That's an on and back. Man, man, man. And one of the cool things I like is here's the shark with me, which is everything you have access to. You can get a list of recent documents. Or as you look at documents and you realize I'm going to want to come back to that, you can star the document and then get your list of star documents. <laughs> For example, here's the area that the Division Director training agenda for today. Looks familiar. Now, if you're logged in as somebody else, you may only have view privilege. Or you may have view and comment privileges. To make a comment, you can click up here and make a comment. You can also get notified when the documents change if you like to. Alex has a wonderful presentation that you can come and give at any time. It's about, what, an hour long? And we're probably going to have to use that uh, down the road online as a go to meeting webinar. I think we have There's that. another reason for you to have a council. And then you get Al at your house and you can do the hour presentation just with you. There you go. to get information. So now your, your, your schedule's full. Because <laughs> he doesn't have enough to do with a new job coming. <laughs> Here's something you all have. I want you to all open up section one in your book. Which uh, Sorry, the binder. Binder, binder. My bad. Section one in the binder. The first page facing you is which one? Agenda alignment. Alignment, okay. Uh, that's last year's alignment. This is an online document. This is a living, breathing document. What you have is a printout as it was yesterday or the day before. And you'll notice there's still some area director spots that are searching. If you have a recommendation for these, please let me know. Because I don't know everybody in the district. Heck, I don't even know everybody in this room. Uh, especially in Division C, Phil. That would be correct. <clears throat> and we have some, some people to ask and stuff, but if you have a suggestion, and if you, don't, if you want to contact them to say, hey, what if I recommended you to be an area director, and they say yes, then go ahead and send it to me. Or if you, if you, if you want me to handle that contact, I'm happy to do that. And my email address is? I'm Marion at worldvision.org. I'm Marion at worldvision.org. M, M-A-R-I-O-N at worldvision.org. Because they say you have to repeat something eight times before people remember it. I don't know how to work. Uh, what's the next document? Uh, the agenda calendar calendar. Calendar overview. This is not the official calendar. This is an overview of the calendar as I know it. Now, right now, there are decums in July and there are, in July and January that are marked tentative. There will be decums at the two conferences. But the other two dates are still open. Yes, ma'am. Uh, under the, for example, the agenda calendar, Oh, never mind. It says TLI. So, what's a decum? District Six, Executive right? Council meeting. That's all of the area directors and above. My all of us. Just reminding you that you have uh, Polsbo and P 
QL up next to Oh, uh, hold on, Tom Water? Tom yeah. Water, sorry. Got those guys yeah, right here. And, and Phil, Nine. remind me when you're starting. Nine. No, when's the registration? Nine, Nine or 8.30? 8.30. Thank you. Is that July 1 day for Division D firm? Yes. Is that Colin or is that, what's the makeup? Aha! Aha! There's a question for you. Well, it is the July 4th weekend. Just pointing that out. That's correct. <laughs> However, here's the most important thing to remember about the new paradigm, and it's actually been true forever. Just because Division A is hosting that particular event does not mean only Division A people can go. Anybody from the entire district, and even in fact people from other districts, can go and get qualified and get trained getting checked off. So you're, you're taking off for four days. July 1st is untenable for you. You're in Division D. Go to A, C, or D, uh, A, B, or C. Okay? That's one of the main points here. Not only do we have location flexibility, but we have date flexibility. And as I told the division directors in our little confab back there, if you want to have there won't be makeups, they'll be exactly the same materials, maybe not the same presenters. If you want to have another one, let me know. We'll get it on the calendar, we'll get presenters assigned, we'll do it. Wherever it is you want to do it, it as long as we can get a venue that makes sense. G? How soon will the DECA meetings not be challenging? Yeah. That's a good question, and I, have, I do not have an answer for you. I need to get a location first. The, um, is that not correct? Tum Water is on July 8th and Poles goes July 9th. Okay, good. And those are the correct divisions. I what? Those are the correct divisions now as well. Thank you. Well, the division we're correct to start with it was the cities that were on. Oh, okay. Division C is doing Tum Water. I mean, Division C is doing Poles Bowl. That makes no sense at all. But thank you. Uh, we will try to hold a DECA. Now, if you're in Alaska, you'll be able to we'll go to meeting into the DECOMs in January and July, July and January. We would want you to come to the live ones at the conferences if you can. But we'll have go to meetings for those two because not everybody will be able to go to the conference. We're supposed to have two that are live only. You must have two that are live only to <coughs> But I'll, I'll, I'll double check that with you guys. As they told us live, live, but not uh, live only. Well, I, that's what I'm, live that's only. my understanding. Live but I'm going to check with them. Okay. By the way, how many conferences will we have in 2018, 2019? Why? Because TI said so. <laughs> They're actually changing the bylaws or the policies documents that now say you must hold two every year. Actually, now this is not the real live uh, calendar. This is just an overview of the major events on the calendar. The real live calendar <coughs> is on the District 32 website <laughs> under D32 calendar. I assume the District 32 website will look very different. <laughs> now we we talked about that earlier. We're converting it over to WordPress. It is the the uh, new it's live right now. This is D32. No, 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 Kyle, you're wrong. This is d32.toastmasters.toastmastersdistricts.org. The new one is d32.toastmasters.org. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all run together. So yes. Write that down. <coughs> There's a Alaska time zone calendar which has all Alaska events and all joint events. And then there below that is the Washington calendar. You know, I hate to be a jerk. Can we just go to the other website? Because the other website has more calendars, and I think people might want to see what's on that other calendar. No, I don't want to, no, I don't want to show them that. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've been there. And the calendar's up off the hamburger menu. How many, I did not know this was called a hamburger menu until yesterday, or the day before they were called. Hamburger and uh, news, news and events. events. They're squished together. View, can and then you have Alaska and Washington calendar. Looks like a sandwich. I don't know. So for example, somebody says, 
Uh, I can't make the one on July 1st, but I can make the one on July 8th. But when you click on the event, it pops up the overview of the event, tells you where it is, the date, time. And if you really want to get into it, notice down here it says check in here and agenda runs. More details give you a whole blow up on it. <coughs> and each one of these calendar events has a link. It says it's an attached one, but it has a link back to the summary document that looks like. They opened a new tab. It's oh, thank the tab to the right. Over here. Can you map it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you're going to map a Google Doc, what you have to do is go to share and copy the link. And it's really ugly looking. I mean, the long links are. Long yeah. and yeah. yeah. The actual calendar entry had a map link on it. So if I was on my phone, I could just Google yeah. it. Oh, is that what you meant by yeah. mapping? You That's didn't what I meant. If you I'm mean. sorry. You're, yeah, you're all heavy. I'm, I'm sorry. Scared. You said, yeah, where's yeah. the map? <laughs> oh, by the way, <laughs> we're asking you to register <laughs> for all TLIs. Why? <laughs> Food headcount for the division directors. <coughs> Sorry. And there's a link here to um, each of the events to go to Eventbrite to register for it. It's a free ticket. It doesn't cost anything. <coughs> Up here is the map. City. Thank you. And the registration is a way to get a head count, or do we have to ask you for it? <coughs> I'm sorry. Water doesn't do anything for me, so that's all I got to play water is gagging. scotch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pellegrinos is off of exit uh, 102 here in. Where's that 101? Uh, I think you go one more down. I think it's 102 or 103. I can't remember exactly. No, Prosper is 102. So it's up here off of 102. It's okay. right off the freeway, I said that for it. Yeah. So as you click here, <coughs> or you can click it on the calendar entry, and it takes you, in this case, to the Tacoma Eventbrite page. Then you scroll down, and you uh, register here, and boom, you use la 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 la. It says, who are you? It's a free registration form. What happened? Mike, how does the Division A director find out how many people have have uh, signed up for her TLI. How many people are coming next weekend? Do you know? <laughs> I hate it when somebody asks me a question that I should have answered a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on a second. I'm going to have to get logged in here, manage events. Do we have to do a whole new login? You have a. Uh, oh, this is, this is this is uh, a, a deal right now. Account. Is this is not a. The so website you're have to has no login. There are 19 people that have registered for Division A. So far. It sounds like a notice needs to go out. Well, yeah. And, and what, I, what I've said on the announcements is, if you do not register, you may not get a seat if there's not enough room. And that you can tell. But I also said people can show up if they want to. Right. So, yeah. But it's half the people yeah. register, and the other half gets the summary. Right. Yes, but area sure. directors are supposed to be sending out the reminder. The division director sent a reminder to the area directors, and sometimes the area directors don't do anything. Well, that sounds like a leadership problem to me. Uh -huh. What you should have said is, if you don't register, you may not get food. Yeah. Michael? I, I'm sorry, I missed how you got to that page. Uh, don't worry about it, because you can't get there. Um, I'm logged there. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Ask me. So didn't you send that message to both area and division? I did earlier, but I haven't said anything in the last week. And it's time to I'm send I'm talking again. about sending out the information, uh, this information right here. It had both area director and division director already right here. It did. Okay. But that doesn't mean they passed it on. Oh, so I think what to and I pass it to old, the old ones and new ones, sorry, existing ones and current ones and new ones. Yep. Michael. So you, you will send uh, division directors updates the week before or something like that? Okay. A couple days before, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mike. Well, I'm going to ask you. Yeah? Can you go back and show us how the division C will register for the... What is the mechanism to do that? 
Okay. When you look at the Google calendar, it doesn't matter which site you're on, and you want to register for Division C, all you down here it says, please register for food headcount here, down in the description. So you would click here, and you'd then be able to, oh, okay. to uh, register. Okay. But my question is, is can we get a link in an email so that you can send that to our club officers that are incoming? So they know Here's what I would recommend you do. No, 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 you can copy it. That's true. Here's what I would do. I would send them a link to this Google Doc, which has all of them in there, so they can see all the dates that are available and all the locations. Can I share that? It is shared. Sure. But what you, when you go share here and copy a link, then you go to your email application and just paste that in and say, please go here to see right. all of the different events. You say this is shared, but, they, but these folks may not have within their email a link to this location. But if we share it, so if it if on there it says anyone who has the link can open it, that means if we share it with our our yes, yes. they will be able to open it. They'll be able to open it. Click, you click a link yes. to get there. If you do a search on Google Docs, you won't find it. Cindy, we need we need to get up there to network. Okay, don't talk to me. <laughs> 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 Yeah, they do. You don't have 20 registered for Division A. Yay. Yeah. Uh oh, okay, I see how you are. <laughs> now, a couple of new things. We've already mentioned the D32 website is being upgraded as we speak. Things will be moved from the old site to the new site between now and as soon as possible. Right, Alex? That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed what you said. He <laughs> still answered. The new website will have more and more on it as you migrate things from the old website to the new website. Oh, that is true. And there will be links back and forth and very soon, at least four. Um, yes, uh, currently uh, we now have Twitter embedded on our, the homepage of the new website. There is a picture from today's meeting already on the website. And um, on the new website, on the new website. Oh, because I just went there and it won't let me look at it. So, no, it told me that I had to go to the old website. D32. I gotta be in the look, 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 yeah. If you can click, the, click on the, the top banner, District 32, that oh, will okay. take you. Thank you. To take, the me, take me home. And then on the right hand side, do you see the Twitter feeds? Yeah. So that's uh, that was that was a picture that. Uh, Laura Melrose asked me to post at the end of the year. I just posted that. And then the one right below it is from today, the our Alaska Oh, yeah. So line up. I, I'll be thinking of saying something like that, but I thought I'd let it go. So that's happening. If you have suggestions for the website, send them to me. I'll make sure that it gets to Alex. And my email address is? Now, View from 32, how many of you actually have looked at the View from 32 in the last three months? The View from 32 is the district newsletter. Now, there is a mailing list for this, and you may not be in the mailing list. If you don't have, if you're not on the mailing list, or you think you're not, ask somebody who is, and they will forward it to you, and there's a, a subscribe link at the bottom. That's the best way to get on there. One of the things we're going to be doing is revamping that so that it's not so long. How many of you have noticed that it's really long? Yeah. Mm. What we're going to start doing is putting articles on the website and then just, uh, what's the word? Um, lead, lead ins from on the, on the mm -hmm. District 32. The other thing we're going to do is, I believe, uh, we need to work on this, is, it, is right now it seems like all the information is really for district leaders and we need to have a club version clubs can help other clubs. We started an article for that, but I'm thinking we may alternate versions or something. Because clubs are always looking for ideas, well, many clubs are. How many of you have a, have know of a club or you're in a club where you do this really cool thing and you'd love to share that with other people if they will listen? That's what we want to get done. Because it ain't about the district. It's about who? The members. The members. So exciting changes are coming. And if you have comments to make on any of this stuff, send them to me. 
There will be a leadership contact list document in Google. We have one for this year. I haven't posted the, the uh, one for next year yet. There is a document out there for, do you have enough tabs open, Mike? <laughs> it's called, uh, it's called District 32 Leadership. These are the positions we filled via election or appointment. You'll notice several of the places are still open. We're looking for a chief judge, and we may need one up there and down here. I hadn't thought of that until just now. And all this does is list who's been assigned to which position and what clubs they're in. It's not, there's nothing here to, to contact you at all. However, district leaders need to contact each other. And so there will be a document out there with email addresses and phone numbers and access only by the district leaders so that you can call on their area directors. How many of you have seen or are comfortable or expect to have multi-area speech contests? Two, area, two or more areas together. I find that that makes it a whole lot easier. The audience is bigger, all that stuff that, that Kyle said earlier. I highly recommend it. And in fact, B and F are used to have a multi-division contest together, which probably will continue in the long term. What we don't know after this coming fall is, how are we gonna do fall speech contests with no district conference in the fall? Uh, there's still there's a lot of debate. There's, I think TI is still beating that one with a stick. They don't know what they're gonna do. We may only take them up to the division. And maybe that's something. We may do away with fall contests. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. I think we've talked about resources enough. We talked about the uh, distinguished district and club performance and all that stuff on the TI website. I'm telling you, especially after April 1st, next to April 1st, the area directors and division directors are going to be all over those pages because you're going to want to help your clubs become distinguished and help your members earn, earn awards. If I hear of an area or division director going out of, to a club and saying something like, we really need you to get to, to five goals so that the, the area can be, my area can be distinguished, I will fly up to Alaska or wherever you happen to live and do a Denoso head slap on you in the back of the head. It ain't about the district, it ain't about the area or division, it's about the members. So, to that point, you're saying maybe we'll do away with all contests to get all together? It's possible. So do away with fall contest all You know, Project 8 in the Competent Leader Manual, you have to chair something like a contest or event membership drives. If we at least do club contests and area contests and division contests, get that many more opportunities, it doesn't come up that often, only twice a year, to chair an event. And so I think that we should at least continue through the division level because it is about the members and it is an opportunity to practice chairing for the committee. You know what else could be done at an area level instead of at a club level? <coughs> and that is membership building events, speech crafts, um, open houses. Well, I just I just want to say because I did I did research this uh, because there was a, a challenge a while back. Toastmasters specifically states that um, speech crafts are to only be run by clubs, not areas or other or the other levels. I haven't seen that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's there. Wow. It's like progressive area, what was it, area 23 or 4 right away? Well, I know, because that's, that's the, yeah, they could still be run by multiple together. clubs working right. together. Right. Yeah. Yes. In other words, the area, they can be, they can be run by one club with other members yeah. from other clubs yeah. supporting them. Yeah. They must right. be run by one other club, clubs. Yeah. according to TI. Yeah, so don't call it an area. Don't, yeah, we made that mistake. Track. Call it a Gig Harbor or, or South uh, Kitsap. Uh, Call it Harborside Toastmaster Speechcraft. Whatever. It's important. I am now open for discussion of anything. I was wondering if the, the view email addresses for the clubs that keep their free toast host up to date could just use the membership and the club number for free toast host. Actually, send us the email address. 
What was the question? I didn't understand the use, question. Use the free, t free toast host email address for the, the view. Email aliases. No, no. Um, if, if you want to sign up for the view, you need to you need to go on to, um, on our new website, there is a field. You just say sign up for the view. You type in your email address, you press the send button, and you're, you're signed up. Could That's you how you do it. Toast toast? Huh? You, could, you could use your free toast no, you, host. No, you, 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 you couldn't, and here's why. Free Toast Host will only let will only send emails to two email addresses that are registered as members on within the within really? the site. Those are aliases. They're not email addresses. It's confusing. Uh, it's very technical. Okay. You can't use it. Okay. Yeah. The other question I have is, um, you know, for getting getting credit for being a coach, there are performance measures. Are there performance measures for getting credits for being an area person? An area director? Mm -hmm. The area director serves at the discretion of the district director. So, so in other words, the only thing that could disrupt, disrail that is if you fire me. <laughs> and I don't get my one year in. Oh, yeah. In other words, you don't have to be a distinguished area or a distinguished area. And you don't have to but do the two reports. However, if the district director felt for some reason that, that person was not doing their job, they could just do the 29th on you off and you don't get a full year. It, it, see, it seems like it's... But I grade on effort, not on results. Uh, it seems like it's, it's an important position. It should uh, it should have some performance measures. <laughs> how, well, how, how many of you have been, been, been a, a member of a, essentially so, a President's Distinguished Club and walked around and go, I was, I was President when we were President's Distinguished. How many of you have said something like that? Anyway? <laughs> Same thing with area and division directors. I, and district directors love to share that stuff. I was, I was a director of a distinguished district. So I just heard two different things. That what? You do have to turn in two reports, and if you don't turn that in That you perform. Well, no, that's not even true. There are people uh, that Oh, I thought you were saying there's no performance criteria. And I'm saying, yeah, if, if you don't turn in your reports, there's something about your performance. Well, no, I mean, in report. order to get credit for being a. Right. a if you didn't turn in the, all, any of your reports for the year, that I would consider that grounds for uh, for disqualifying you personally. Right. I don't know what any other district director would feel, Ooh. but yeah, it, it, it's I, and I see your point. It'd be nice if there were some kind of uh, minimum requirements, right, to be can, an area director. Can, can I make go? <clears throat> so I'm not. A, I don't want to talk about firing area directors, we're going to talk about helping area directors. Right? Yes. If you, if you are struggling, let's say, to do your reports, ask your division director for help. Ask your fellow area directors for help. We have an area director here in, area, in uh, Division B who got a job, he, he was living in Division B and he got a job way down in Lacey and he had to move. So he had done his first four reports no problem. Second four reports, he just couldn't do it. He's, he's down there and he can't make it back up here for lunchtime clubs. So he asked his division director for help. He's been, he's visited his clubs as much as he could and then he had to pass the duties on and his division director and his fellow area directors picked up the slack to help him out so he can finish his year. And they are, they have visited his clubs and then they give him the report and he enters wow. it. And he, and he enters it. So the people are here to help you if you need it. That's right. And, and anyone, an area division, uh, sorry, area director or above can actually file that report or make the, I prefer that the actual area director make, file the report even if somebody else did the visit. But legally, any, uh, the district tree or your division director could file, could uh, file that report. I prefer that it be done as close to the club level as possible. Judy? I can make a housekeeping announcement and Go. talk about two things. Well, first of all, those of you who are seeking reimbursement, do, oh, yeah. do you all have the reimbursement form? I can email it to you if you don't have it. I see not. So if you can do it by June 15, our finance manager, Rayanne Mitchell, would appreciate it because it's a year-end close. And if you would email it to me, here's my email address. Someone asked, what is a DECM? And I got the same question last year. District Executive Committee meeting. It consists of all the area directors, division directors, the trio, immediate past president. Super six, yeah. Or, uh, yes, senior six. Th that's right, the senior six program. 
public relations manager and finance manager and administration manager. We do business there sometimes. In order to do any of that business, we need a quorum. And a quorum this year, I think, will be 21 because we have 26 area directors. I know I made sure I had a quorum for each one, so you may get a call from Mike. I need you for a quorum. My understanding, Mike's going to double check this with TI, is that two per year have to be in person. So if you were online, you would not count as part of the quorum. For the other two, if you're well, online, you it yeah. does. And we'll make sure that's correct, but that's been my understanding. Regarding the view, we worked on it this year to make it as good as we could. One of the reasons we have a right-hand column within this issue is so that people can see quickly what's important in this issue. I know that it gets long. I like the idea of one for clubs and one for the district. In fact, if I had known myself well enough, I would have done that because I get so focused and I'm focused on the district. If I have one issue where we focus on clubs, maybe I don't even have to write it for it. I think that could be helpful. Well, that's just my opinion. I'm glad Next Trio is considering it. Some districts do that. One for clubs and one for the district, and they have different names for them. How, how many, just out of curiosity, how many would like that? One newsletter just for clubs and one for the district. I don't even know what to look for in it. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. And thank you for leading our district for yes. All right, quick roll call. She's going to read the name she has. If she doesn't call your name, you can get over here and let her know. Okay, I have Carolyn Curley, Jill Ramiel, Christine Devine, Michael Nile, Laura Zabralski, Phil Pearson. Phil Pearson. 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 Pearson, sorry. That's everybody. That's all the TVs, right? Yeah. And then I have area directors, Becky Grady, Janice Bruckhauser, Patrick Dye, Ken Hilfiger, Carrie Santoro, Juanetta Ayers, Darren Bratton, Debbie Baker, Sarah Thorpe, Mike Maddox, Bill Cottle, uh, Brett Burroughs and Cindy Slutterbull. And so I don't, I didn't get you, Robin Lee. Okay. And what area? Which one? Okay, and Marcy Carlson. M A R C I? I M A R C I E? I think Carlson's spelled with an E. Okay. And 32. 32? No, no, area 23. Oh, area 23, sorry. <laughs> Cynthia Sanderson. Area 34. Okay. I am assistant area director for 34, Cheryl Marks. Okay. Ooh, you're going to have an assistant director? Ooh, area? I was cool. No, no, no. <laughs> we encourage that. We encourage that. If you don't have anybody to assist you, think about finding somebody. And Pathways is coming. And I know some of the some of you district leaders want to be Pathways guides. And that if it does come in March, as we think it might, you might want to have an assistant at that point. To, uh, an assistant can be appointed all any time during the year. And if you do want to do that, let me know. We will get them an official look and name badge. Same thing for dis for division directors. Division directors can have assistants. Now, <coughs> the assistants don't get ALS credit, so it's, that's not what it is. But many times an assistant will step up to a job next year having seen what it looks like. And if you're trying to train your replacement, find your replacement, this could be a good way to do it. You could do it even in January, February, March next year. Have them job shadowing. Other discussions? Other questions? I think you're a great team and you'll have a great year. Okay. Yay. 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 This is that important. Um, well, it was <laughs> So you go to District 32 and there's two tabs, just like on your club website. So it's where it's members only. So you click on the district leaders only, and then you write your profile. Put in your picture if you want. Your district leaders now. You want to be listed there. 
the, so yeah, the, we'll put them on the new website. Yeah, but the, the new website doesn't work that way, and we're, we're getting rid of the website. So, um, then never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Alex will let us know what's going on when it happens. Because if he doesn't, I will sit on him. <laughs> and by the way, we need a huge thanks to Alex Mayo and to um, Brian Besnick for being our editors and webmasters for the last year. And <laughs> Thankless job, and I wanted to thank them. Uh, one more resource: we do have an advanced class that meets the third Thursday of every month at 6:30 p.m. in Tacoma, South Tacoma. It's called Sound Advice. I joined it as a division director. It was very helpful to me to learn how to. It's a leadership-focused club. Right, it's a leadership-focused club. We have people we calling are in from all over the place. You know, working on. Guiding people in, though, aren't we? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say we've got it done to a science yet. But if you're interested in attending uh, remotely, let me know. We'll see if we can get you connected. And what's my email address? Thank you, Mr. You came away with nothing but that. You came away with something today. I want to thank you all for coming because you've all been very attentive. I hope you got something out of the class. I know some of you need to head to the airport and we'll work on rides. Once the uh, once the locals clear out, we'll, we'll get organized. Anybody got any questions about anything else? Not now. You will later. That's a bad email. Thank you all for coming.